Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions related to three different topics, wealth building, commodities, and or financial topics. Uh, so we're just gonna dive right in, take a look, see what people are sharing. If you wanna follow for finance, and if you wanna join our community, finding-value.com, where I dive deeper into all of these topics, looking for potential investment opportunities and sharing those opportunities uh, with everyone, and you can track to see what I'm doing in this commodity bull market. Mayday coupon code uh, is still active. So coming down to Logan, he says 1.7% of homes are underwater. That is 960,000 homes, the lowest levels ever recorded in history. National home equity distribution by loan to value segment. And we're looking at the stuff over here. So that's it, 1.7% homes, but we're gonna have this big crash according to uh, some YouTubers and people on Twitter when there's no homes that will be foreclosed on hardly. Good luck with that. Uh, we've got another one. So just a quick FYI, a $325,000 home with a $25,000 tax credit, bringing the cost to 300,000, with a 7% interest rate is 1,991 a month. A $325,000 home at 3.25% is 1,414 a month. That's a $577 a month difference, and over 30 years, a savings of 207,720. A better economy and better interest rate helps everyone. Don't be fooled by free money. Uh, says Ashley Cooper. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm a math guy. Um, your math is correct, uh, but there's a big flaw in it. Uh, when interest rates go down, that doesn't mean that a $325,000 home will be $325,000 anymore. If you buy a home at the interest rates that are high with a tax credit, which is $300,000, and then you eventually get a 3.25% interest rate, well, why wouldn't you just refinance it? If you buy today, you can always refinance later if the interest rates go down. You can't do that. You Like if you're waiting for an interest rate to go down, you may not get the home that you like. You may not get the deal that you think you can get. If rates go down and it goes into the affordability of a lot of people, they're going to bid up homes again. So I think the price will go up. Uh, to buy a house, if you are ready and you can easily afford it, you can always refinance later so long that interest rates go down. If interest rates continue to go up, well, then you've got a good interest rate. So you always have the option to do a, a refinance and, and get a lower mortgage payment if rates go down. That's a big if, I get it. Uh, but what are you gonna do? Not buy a house? You're gonna rent your entire life? Uh, what does that look like over 10 or 20 years is what I would do. I would do the math. And if you guys want me to do the math, I mean, I can do that if people want me to and I can show you. It says, as I'm looking through some home data this evening, this is the one I still can't wrap my pen or head around for prospective buyers. There's a reason home buying activity is where it is. It's not just rates. And it's what he's saying is here's the housing bubble. And it says the home price divided by the median household income ratio. And we're up around seven. This could mean a couple of things. It could mean that. We need to price everyone out because there's a severe shortage, which we have. Or it means that we are in an overvalued market. Sales would decline, which they have, and we should have a buttload of inventory, but we don't. So this housing bubble is not the same as this because we do not have inventory levels that are going through the roof for the majority of cities in America. And we have a 7 million home deficit to catch back up to family formations. So we need to price out the median household income guy because 
We don't have enough homes for them. Sorry. That's why it's up there, in my opinion. And interest rates obviously exaggerated the move to some degree. The frugal mogul says, someone I know sold their house at the top of the market and had been waiting for prices to come back down again. The problem was they sold in 2015. They sold in 2015. And guess what? We're not at the top of this market yet. We still have a blow-off top to go through in terms of prices. And that blow-off top will happen when interest rates go down, probably over the next year or two. And then we're going to have a big move to the upside because we don't have enough homes. And we went back into affordability again. And I think home prices are going to go up. And I, that's the minority. It puts most people on the wrong side of this. You know what I'm going to do with my home? Absolutely nothing. I don't even care. I don't want to move out of the place I'm currently in. I've got a low mortgage rate, yes, but if I were to buy something, I would go buy a, a million dollar house and I would buy it probably mainly cash or, or whatever. And I would only do it to get away from people. That's it. My only thing. Um, and no, I would never go back to renting again. I absolutely hate renting. Freaking hate it. I didn't like a lot of the people who owned some of the rentals before me. They tried doing stuff like, charging me for appliances and, and doing stuff. It's like, no, I, I'm not doing that crap again. I don't care about that. Uh, Kevin Bamberl, I'm, I'll go through this at the end. So it's kind of a longer read, but I agree with it. It's about crypto. Uh, coming down, Resi Club. It says Zillow home price data for the 50 largest metro housing markets. Uh, so let's look at, let's just, let's just look at this, okay? So we're coming in here. Kind of hard to see. I think it's actually bigger here. So we'll go here. Um, this one here is year to date. So this first blue one's year to date and they're all positive. Positive, positive, positive all across the board. Denver's up 3%, Baltimore's up 4%, bunch of California Los Angeles, California's up 6% year to date. Yeah, huge huge market crash there, right? I think in the bottom here, if you go all the way to the bottom, uh Austin, Texas is up 0.5% year to date. 0.5% and I know you guys can't see that, but and that's supposed to be one with a lot of inventory. Uh, China's moving from paper to hard assets. So China treasury and gold holdings uh, coming on down for treasury holdings, going on up for gold holdings. Uh, that's right. There is a distrust with the United States and holding their treasury bonds. And you've got the inflation problem. If inflation is greater than the interest rate that the treasury is paying you, why are you holding it? The so treasurer of uh, China is trying to unwind that. Uh, Mike Simonson, he says, available inventory of unsold homes has declined across the U.S. for two weeks now. One reason is there are more listings being withdrawn now. For every two sales, there's one listing is withdrawn. Uh, so really what, what's happening is we're starting to turn over and the interest rates, I think, are starting to have an impact on this. The total inventory for sale, it's starting to turn over to some degree. Uh, new listing withdrawals, you can see this is weekly new listings rolling over. Uh, and then we've got pending home sales. Uh, there's 2024. That's rolling over, but it's not, it's rolling over slower than new listings uh, are. And then home prices, uh, there we are, just slightly above the current years in September. For median price of new contracts, median. And price reductions also look like they're going to roll over here at some point. We've got Jesse Felder says, energy companies in the U.S. are planning new natural gas-fired power generation at the fastest pace in years. One of the clearest signals yet that fossil fuels are likely to have a longer runway than previously thought. And this is U.S. on pace to plan more gas power, natural gas power capacity this year. There it is, coming online. Those AI better be going to get fueled by natural gas. Brandon says, I don't think people realize how high silver can run. Take a step back and look at the price action since 1861. Silver is forming one of the largest cup and handle patterns ever. We could see $45 to $60 an ounce uh, in a few years. 
And this is the big move lower uh, with interest rates going down, increasing interest rate environment, declining interest rate environment is this big uh, consolidation. And then we just entered an increasing interest rate environment, much like this environment here, uh, where, where I think we're going to break out and absolutely rip. Great pattern. Uh, Lindsay says, it took us seven years to get $100,000 invested in the stock market. And today, just two and a half years later, we've crossed $200,000. I'm grateful. Uh, that's great. Um, what I did is I piled all my money in the beginning when I first started working. Uh, I think I had a hundred grand saved in like three years, maybe two, three years is what I, what I did it in. I think it was like three years. Uh, I put it all in my 401k uh, pre-tax, trying to reduce taxable income. I lived with my parents for a little bit and that's where I saved all my money. Uh, so I, I just saved everything I could in the beginning and just invested it all. Uh, that's when I was 22, 22, 23 years old, uh, up to 25, 26. And I just saved, saved, saved. Now, did I forego uh, anything in my early years? No, I was doing all the stuff I really wanted to do. I played tons of softball. It was pretty fun. Competitive level too later on. Uh, and I did a lot of stuff with friends. I uh, went on trips. I didn't just, I didn't spend a lot of money. Uh, I did everything on the cheap. And I don't think I really sacrificed anything, in my opinion. Um, I would do it the same exact way that I did it looking backwards. Uh, WCTW, so a short squeeze in the making, but pay attention to the signals after that. So in his opinion, it says, I think the worries over oil demand this year are valid, but I think most of those worries are priced in with sp speculator positioning at historic levels on the bear side, we are going to see a material short squeeze in the near term, in his opinion. Uh, we'll see if that occurs. I don't know. Uh, and, and, and again, it doesn't matter if you know the future. I'm not trying to make predictions and, and make money off of predictions. Um, that's not the strategy. The strategy is buy stuff when it's cheap and then don't, don't, don't do anything. Just wait until it becomes expensive. Uh, the market conditions swinging around is what determines the pricing for an asset. Uh, it's, it's the market conditions. So uh, think of it as um, you've got a bottle of water and on a nice cold day, people are not thirsty. Uh, but in the middle of summer, people get really thirsty because they're sweating all that water out, out of their body and they want water. So one could say that water is more expensive in this area, so to speak, in the summer versus the winter because of the demand. Uh, and that's really what market conditions are. Uh, people want gold in the market conditions today, then they wanted gold 10 years, you know, 10 years ago in 2014, which was more towards the bottom. So it, it's, it's based off the market conditions swinging around. So I'm just buying things that are out of season. I'm buying swim trunks in the fall when they're reduced on sale. I'm buying uh, snow shovels in the spring that they're just discounting heavily down to get rid of them off their store shelves. Uh, that's all I do. And I, and I apply that to everything in my life. I buy shovels uh, and, and you know things to clean off your car in the spring when it's on clearance. It's the spring slash summer. And you can get this stuff for like 75, 80% off. Uh, Hanny, so this is a person asking me, uh, the question is, I'm looking to get into a property ladder. If inflation expected to run rampant over the next five plus years, how would you position? It's worth having good mortgage debt, which would be inflated away, or a portfolio hedge against inflation to increase the deposit. Trying to work out whether it's best to protect my deposit portfolio against inflation and hopefully I'll pace during inflation times to increase deposit amount or take on good debt to inflate away the mortgage payment and buy in a higher interest rate environment. Well, I don't know what your situation is. What I would do, well, what I am doing is I'm, I, I own a lot of physical metals and I own a portfolio that is inflation uh, protected against inflation. And, I, and I've got a lot of dividend yield coming from it. Uh, so, so that's what I've done. 
I don't want to rent out uh, a house and deal with it. So that, that's me. But buying a house and renting it out and having inflation eat it away, uh, I think that's great. You could do that too. Uh, and I would be, I would do it if the math works out, d- depending on where you're at and where you're located, is what I would do. If if the math works and that's what you want to do. Uh, Peter Schiff says, the Fed is about to prove it learns nothing from its past mistakes. On Wednesday, it will cut interest rates despite the fact that rates are still too low. This will be followed by a return to QE, another repeat mistake that will engender more debt and send consumer prices soaring. And there's obviously people who disagree with this viewpoint. They think that we're going to get deflation or disinflation from a slowdown in the market. And that is where everyone is split. They're split that there's the inflation camp and then there's the disinflation deflation camp. Who is right? I don't know. Um, I would say that we have disinflation already. And them cutting interest rates, we have to see if credit gets expanded. I mean, that's what we have to wait for. We don't know what that looks like and and what this transition between where we are today and the rate cuts after, what that really looks like. Goldman Sachs says oil speculative length has turned negative for the first time in its history. And there's a chart showing it go negative. Um, What I'll say is it's usually good to take the opposite bet here. So I would rather go long here and I would go short when it's way up here at high, high levels. Uh, That's what I would do. Now, Grady says this ratio chart shows gold miners turned versus the leading tech sector already five months ago. Then the ratio broke out in August. The historical global capital rotation has started. Catching huge sector rotations uh, early is one piece of the puzzle to making the really big gains. And this is gold miners versus semiconductors, which has already broken out. And that was the bottom here on a big bullish engulfing candle as a reversal pattern. That's what we've got going on ahead of us. And the gold and silver mining companies could vastly outperform uh, a lot of other sectors here in the short term. Patrick Karam says, what do you mean crude oil, gold, and silver can't go up higher? Question mark. For years, they've been carving out higher lows. So forget all the narratives and storylines why they can't go up higher. Just observe the actual price charts. Uh, so higher lows for oil, gold, and silver. Oil on a yearly log chart continues to work its way on up uh, and is still in an uptrend. Same with silver. It is in an uptrend and ready to break through its breakout line. And gold's yearly long trend, that's already broken out to the upside. So we've got a breakout there. We've got oil's seven-year rate of change on the bottom. And it's it's been declining here since 1976, uh, 80. Coming down, we, we had another big impulse move up to 2004. And now we're squeezing into a quarter that's about to break to the upside at some point out in the future. Uh, and it could be a very big break. Very big break. And that might be a year away, though. We could, a year or two away. Uh, Grady says the big silver breakout level using the yearly time frame is 31 to 32, and it is right now up against that breakout level. The orange tightening arrow pattern means a breakout is a given, means one of the most significant breakouts in history is incoming. He calls this the mother of all very probable cup and handles. The bigger the base, the higher in space. We've got the the cup here, the handle, uh, and this is the fractal smaller cup and handle over here. So we've got a, a cup and a handle within the big cup, and that cup and handle makes the bigger handle. The measure move is $248 when using this uh, projection here. Peter Schiff says the fact they keep trying to kill Trump is a reason enough to vote for him. There is some validity there, guys. Like, I don't know why they are attacking this man as bad as they are. Uh, Something's going down here. Uh, Silver has officially broke the descending wedge. It's time, guys. Uh, Says Squeaky Mouse. He wanted me to share this, and I am sharing it for Squeaky Mouse. Uh, And that's what we've got. And I'm going to go back up to uh, Kevin's quote here on crypto. If you guys want to hear it, here we go. So, all talking about BTC, Bitcoin, and some of these 
other coins and, and micro strategy. Um, and somebody called out Bambro. says, Bambro, Bitcoin is. So, of course, he thinks micro strategy is uh, FOS. Beyond it being the discovery of money, what most are pricing in and will continue to is the positive feedback loop. It's a stock version of game theory. This is what all these people are saying. And I'm going to agree with Kevin here uh, because I've looked at this and I don't know why these guys are so bullish on it. I don't see a use case. That's just me. And I think they're absolutely uh, off the wall. But let's read what Kevin says. And I agree with what he says here. So LOL, tell me what I don't understand. The arrogance of your kind is always amusing to me. What I understand is that crypto has a role to play. I can see a future where nearly every asset is tokenized, including tokenizing one's one future labor hours and marketing it. What Bitcoin gives its creators is ownership of some unique digits. To acquire ownership, one must waste huge amounts of electricity. Future owners don't get access to the electricity that was wasted. It's destroyed and gone forever. All they get is ownership of a digital certificate declaring that some idiot decided to waste electricity to earn a coin. It's the most ridiculous why to pretend to create wealth. The sector literally wastes energy and proudly argues that they've created something of value, then looks for a greater fool to sell it to. It's a giant bubble. All non-asset backed coins are pure moron coins. People in this space are either delusional or crooks playing a greater fool game dependent on suckering in the public that doesn't even understand the actual history of money. Money should relate directly to hard work and assets. The problem with our money is the banking sector via fractional reserves and the money multiplier effect can create money. Also, governments and the central banks can create it and spend it at will. Bitcoin or other non-asset backed digital tokens don't solve this problem. It makes it worse. They destroy energy and they and there's not a need to own them. Fiat must be earned to pay taxes. Scarcity of a crap coin is irrelevant. So tell me what I don't understand. And that is his opinion on that. And my opinion is very close to that because I don't understand why I need crypto. The only reason people buy crypto is because they think that it is, that it is an inflation hedge and that they will make more money, more purchasing power by buying it. That's the only reason that they think they're going to do that. And it doesn't have any sort of history backing it, which is okay, but you're taking on a huge speculative risk. I don't, I don't, I understand, I think I understand crypto probably better than 99% of the people. And then they tell, you know, even Kevin, I think he probably knows I don't even know if people understand what the the what you actually own. The zeros and ones. You probably don't even know what format it's in. Is it hexadecimal? What is it? Tell me exactly what you own. Tell me what the white papers, you know, what's in the white paper. Oh, just go read the white papers. Have any of these people read the white papers actually? This is designed by humans. And humans <clears throat> are not perfect. There's a flaw in this design. What is the flaw? And you can't say it's just like gold. Gold is an element on the periodic table, which is completely different. This is a design that we made as humans. And all designs in history have been rejected over long, long periods of time. Not rejected, but maybe they've been improved upon and the old design goes away. So I'm very reluctant to say that Bitcoin's going to have any use 20, 30, 40 years from now. I mean, when we go to artificial intelligence, <clears throat> the whole cryptocurrency blockchain crap, it's going to be broken by supercomputers. It will all, you know, it's all going to go away in my opinion. Uh, but that's, that's my opinion there. Good job, Kevin. Uh, and that's what I've got for today, guys. So we'll end it there. Thumb up for the uh, content. 
Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, this is Finding Value.